Roads? It's the Ernest Hancock Show. Where we're going, there aren't any roads. Hey, my mission, mission just to understand what's up. What's up, what's up? You know, here on Declare Your Independence, is, it's really just that. You know, I, I just don't want to be dependent. And a lot of times it just takes information. Let me tell you the information that is really most important for a young activist coming up that I came to realize is that uh, the Constitution does not protect us. The Constitution, I, I don't know if it's just to be made fun of. I mean, it was a, it was an effort. It was, uh, you know, it's like I, I see it like the Bible. It was man's effort to try and make sense of their world and uh, be able to uh, get you on a plantation, a farm, or whatever. Whatever spiritual aspect you have, you know, it's in you. I mean, you know, there's a lot of more mature religions that are much more in tune with how spiritual the individual is and how to attain that connection and so on without having to live through the the rights of some religion, R-I-T-E. Yes, you know these these the processes that you go through more than you just uh, cultivate what's in yourself. Well, the same thing can be said about the Constitution. It's inherently human as our evolution and development as individual sentient beings, intelligent people that can control every aspect of our lives. That somehow we got to go ask permission if we have the permission from what to be able to do that. You know, it's a piece of paper and other pieces of papers that are supposed to jibe with this other piece of paper. And it goes on and on and on to where you just go crazy. And ignorant, ignorance of the law is no excuse. Well, you know, I'm, you know, the the law is no excuse. <laughs> you know, what if I, you know, you know, that's a bumper sticker. The law is no excuse. I, you know, to, to what? You know, just not, just leaving people alone. I vote that if I had to vote. So, one of the things that was really interesting to me as I started to become an activist and started, you know, defining rights and so on and, and looking at, you know, what I am and, and am not allowed to do and why and all this kind of stuff, it, you just start to shed all this illusion off as time goes by because you can see all the mental gymnastics they go through over the decades whenever it's to the benefit of the state. Of course you can't you know, uh, have marijuana because the government says, oh, wait, 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 we need it for the war effort. We need it for something. You know what? You can do it now. As a matter of fact, we, we insist that you do it. We, we're going to subsidize you doing it. Well, part of the process here, I'm going to show you this one letter that where they canceled it. It was, this was in uh, a gentleman named Richard Loomis. And it was a letter from the Arizona Department of Revenue, and this was when the first marijuana bill was passed here in Arizona, and it made it legal. Here in, Mar- in Arizona, marijuana was legal under certain conditions and whatever, and they had their own problems with it. But immediately, the Arizona Department of Revenue then said, oh, with the passage of uh, this, and then they, they found out that uh, – they were on shaky ground because they had these marijuana tax stamps out there. That started becoming common knowledge. The initiative had passed, and the legislature did away with it, and that made everybody mad and so on. So one of this one gentleman was making a big deal out of the fact that, hey, I bought my marijuana tax stamp, got it right here. In fact, he gave me one. You know, it's like, it looks like a regular stamp. Well, I showed you pictures of it here in a little bit, but what happened was is that they he had a girlfriend that, you know, did the, you know, he got weed, he got weed. She was mad at him or something. They got stopped or she was saying he's got marijuana. And he was like, yep, well, I got the tax stamp. He had it on the little baggie. So they kind of, uh, okay, well, I, they checked the law, and I guess so, and they let him go. Well, later they staged a raid on him. They came in, took all his good, didn't matter how much stamps he's had, we'll, 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 we'll shake this out in court. And that produced this law repealing these stamps. Now, the reason was that they did them to begin with was to be constitutional. You can't just take you know certain things away from the people without having some kind of jurisdiction claim on them being able to you know do it under the conditions of some tax. That's how they do away with a lot of your rights is they tax them. 
That's why they called the uh, federal, the BATF alcohol and tobacco guys, when they come get the moonshine, they call them revenueers. It was all about revenue. They understood back then it was all about money. The revenueers, the tax man. So now we're in a situation to where they've, you know, keep eating at that mentality that it doesn't matter. We we claim jurisdiction over because we can. I mean, it just they have been able to socially and economically engineer us into such a way that we're not even looking for the link to the Constitution. We're not even looking for a thread. We're not even looking for any kind of justification or jurisdictional uh, tentacles from the federal government into the states. They're just taking them away. They're saying, nope, we're just going to do it because we can do it. So we're doing it. Well, here we go. Now you have the law passed here. I can see where this is going. They're going to, you know, you know who your drug dealer is going to be? It's going to be U.S. government. And they're going to have all kinds of different requirements in it. And it have to process through certain whatever. And Lord knows what's going to be added to it. Are you going to be able to still grow it in your backyard? You know, I don't I don't know. I mean, we're going to be, you know, finding out soon enough, I'm sure. But one of the other things that I wanted to bring up is that you go to Freedoms Phoenix and this whole thing about them being able to limit uh, firearms being purchased. Because I remember I had a gentleman named Brad Friedman from bradblog.com. He and I uh, overlap a great, we'll have him on this uh, next week. And this week we're just taking off a lot of the uh, guests. They just, you know, want to be chilling and taking off. So here we have uh, feds to require gun sale notification in four southern border states. Now I want you to think about how it is that they're able to do this. Well, I mean, you know, because they can, you know my answer. But, you know, this is something that they have always wanted. When I had Brad on, Mr. Progressive, and he wants to uh, convince us, you know, see, you, you guys are all worried about Obama taking guns. Well, he's not taking guns. You know, he's not a gun grabber. So all, all you uh, gunnies and the NRA and Republicans and Libertarians, you just, just relax on that issue. Don't, you know, nothing to see here. Move along. Well, you know, I'll, I'll get Brad on. Yeah, we'll be talking about some election stuff and such, and and I'll just go look. Uh, yeah, how's this gun thing coming along now? You know, we're we're in the second half of the first term here. You know, uh, we got some plans, do they? What what's their excuse going to be? Well, of course, all of us libertarians, we know that the gun violence and and what's going on in the borders is because of the drug war. Yeah, this is not a secret. And who wants drug war more than anybody else? Law enforcement and the drug dealers. So what makes their profits possible? What makes their funding? We know this. You know, then what? Who, who has the courage to, to stand up to this stuff? You know, uh, Ron Paul is very rare. And it's not, it, it's amazing that he's able to get as much penetration as he has. But it's, um, where do we got to wait for Pat Robertson to bring this up? Okay. I mean, you know, let's go ahead and read this a little bit and you kind of see where I'm going with this. Citing the need to curb border violence under the pilot program that could start as soon as next month, dealers in Texas, California, Arizona, and New Mexico will have to inform Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives of any sales of two or more rifles, including assault weapons. The Fed, which is, yeah, I guess, a, I don't know what they mean by that. Usually it means semi-automatic battle rifles, but uh, you, know, you say assault weapon, that usually means fully automatic. So I would imagine that if they're saying if it's a fully automatic, you only need to buy one. So let's assume that. The Feds say this will allow them to track any weapon that may, may be falling into the wrong hands. But dealers like Jim Pruitt of Jim Pruitt's Guns and Ammo call the proposal a backdoor effort to implement gun registration. It goes on record with the ATF forever. There's no mention of purging the system. So what you basically have is an ad hoc gun registration, says Pruitt. That happened in Germany, and Hitler used it very well to pick up all the weapons when he decided to take over. You know, this is to be, you know, paid attention to, because we're going into times to where, you know, maybe I want to be able to buy a bunch of guns. Yep, be a good investment. We'll be right back. 